So it finally happened. On the 19th of November, the new immigration law was written into the BOE here in Spain, which means we now have some new text that we need to look at, we need to study, and how is that going to affect people moving over on things like their non lucrative visa or family members, etc. Okay, well, we're going to chat to you about that right now. We're also going to give you some really, really good news about the non lucrative visa renewals. So the new immigration law. Well, there's going to be a lot of videos and we're going to be doing a lot of videos about this. Uh, but I just want to give you this video to kick it all off and tell you about the initial information and what's been happening. And what we're going to do at the end of the video is we're going to talk about the biggest point that everybody was worried about, which was the renewals of non-lucrative visas. So what happens, let's just step back a bit and tell you what's happened because I keep seeing a lot of information out there but no really, really understands why we've got to where we have today. So first of all, there is a proposal for a new law to be put into place and that proposal eventually turns into a draft. Now, once this draft is published, um, there's a certain amount of time that the public and professionals can actually go and contest anything that's in the draft uh, on an online government platform. And in this draft, there was some information, just a couple of lines that said that the non to visa renewals, okay, will be renewed for four years rather than two. And this caused a bit of a stir on the internet and certainly kept my, kept my inbox busy, I can tell you that. But you can't comment on a draft. At this point, I spoke to lots of people. Um, I spoke to a very good uh, friend and, um, and a historian of mine, actually, who works in the Granada province. I said, what do you think about a draft? He said, you don't comment on drafts. Don't call, they change. Uh, also, our good friend Costa up there in Valencia, I spoke to him and he was like, I'm not making any comments on the draft. So there was a lot going on on YouTube about the draft. But until you get that final text, which we got on the 19th of um, November this month, two days ago, really, you can't tell what's going to happen. And funny enough, things have changed. What we're going to do moving forward is we're going to make a lot of videos commenting on this. So once let's go back to the process. Once the draft has gone through and this time has gone past where the public and professionals could comment on it, uh, it then goes to the Consejo de Ministros. It then goes to the Consejo de Gobierno where they look at it. The government then approves the, approves the actual text and make sure that it can be legally binding. It then, binding. It then goes back to the ministers and then eventually after a lot of legal government wills have turned it is published in a place called the BOE which is the Boletín Oficial de Estado and this is where all the laws and budgets and everything so they're all published in here so people refer back to the legal text now you can see on this image here it says that le legislación Consolidada, and then it gives you the the um, number of the Real Decreto, which is the law one one five five bar two zero two four. The date that it was uh, published, and in more legal jargon, you don't really need to know about. You'll see at the bottom there that um, <clears throat> it's got a line which says Entrada en vigor. Now that means when will it come into force? So we have six months. Well, we had six months two days ago or yesterday it will come into force on the 20th of the 5th 2025 all right and it also got there underneath the part department which is departamento and Minist <coughs> ministerio de la Presen presidencia justicia relaciones con las cortes okay so at the bottom of that you will see there is a link to the actual law itself so what do we know? We know that it's been published. We know we've got the exact text and we know it will come into force in 2025. So what happens now? Well, now, first of all, behind the scenes, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who work in our industry WhatsApping like mad. 
absolutely what's happening what do you think about this how's this going to be interpreted oh my gosh they've changed this what's this what's that as you can see here okay there's over 170 pages of text and it doesn't all relate to what we feel is important so we we evidently here at upsticks we do like the non-lucrative visa it's our favorite visa of course it is but there is an awful lot of changes which have come for everything. And the purpose behind this law was to facilitate and make easier the immigration process. OK, so there's still an awful lot to study. And I'm actually quite excited about going through some of the different residency authorizations which have been simplified and see if there's another way that we could offer people residency. But this is going to take a while. OK, this is really going to take a while. So if you are out there and you're trying to get definitive answers from professionals, not even myself, if you're coming on a work, week, you're going to have to give <clears throat> all these people time to get their head around how the applica applications are going to look moving forward if you intend to come after the 20th of May 2025. All right. So now it's been published. First thing is, there's going to be lots of discussions between people who work using this law. And then after that, normally there are what we call instructions published uh, from Madrid, the, the, the main foreigners office there, on how parts of the law will need to be interpreted and how they will need to be applied. OK, so don't forget, this is the raw format here, but there's nothing that says uh, if you, you know, nothing that says, this is what this is what the conditions they need to abide by. But then you're going to have to have this paper, this paper, this paper, this paper, this paper. Now, some instances when they're talking about the um, the funding of some visas, they have stipulated various things. But in mainly this is the law and then it's open to interpretation by the different estancias of how it is brought into force, shall we say. So there's going to be an awful lot of people, people who work in our industry, looking at it going okay we think this is how this is going to work all right so if you are out there you're looking for definite answers that's not always going to be as easy to achieve as you think um so <clears throat> once the law kicks in then hopefully most people have their ducks in a row and the applications will be going in as per the new law and at that point You'll start to get things that come out uh, because part of immigration is learning by experience. Right? Same with when we're doing the non lucrative visa renewals. We know the nuances between the different provinces like Alicante, Almeria, Granada, Malaga, when it comes to things like the financial requirements. Would you believe that places like Malaga are different to places like Almeria? OK, certain documents in Almeria they don't particularly like and certain documents in Malaga they're OK with. So... A lot of it comes down to experience, which means that, you know, <laughs> as the applications go in, we're going to gain more experience about how this law is going to be applied. So that's really how it's going to play out for now. And now I want to talk about the big thing that everybody's been going on about, which is the length of the renewal of the non-lucrative visa. So. There's, all, there's been a lot of a big outcry on the internet about one of the parts in the draft law which mentioned that the non-lucrative visa will no longer be renewed for two years. It will be renewed for four years. Okay, so for four years. Which, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is if you have passing, passive recurring income, which means the minimum requirement... It's not a problem because it's still passive and it's still recurring. The problem will be for people who are working off of savings. All right. Because in now, as we know, you contrary to some information that's out there, if you're renewed for two years and you're working from savings, you need double the savings. OK, if you have passive recurring income that is counted as double. So say you have 20 grand a year coming in in passive recurring income over the two years, that will be counted as 40. But you would need to top it up if you're a couple to with 32K for the 72 uh, to be considered for your renewal. But we're going to do another video on the renewals. I was just actually waiting for this law to come out before we did it. All right. But in the law, 
check this out. Now this is, would you believe out of the 170 odd pages at the moment, in our demographic of client, this is what everybody is shouting about and it's only two lines. The lines are on article, I think it's article 60, I'll tell you now, 63.7. Check this out, article 63.7, it's on your screen now. It states that the La autorización de residencia temporal renovada tendrá una vigencia de dos años, salvo que corresponda obtener una autorización de residencia de larga duración o la larga duración UE. What does that mean? That means that you will be renewing for two years. Okay, so you're going to be renewing for two years. So basically the same as it is now. Right, so we have the first year, we then renew for two years, we then renew for another two years, and then you can get a permanent card, a permanent residency card after that. So great news for everybody who is on the non-lucrative visa, everybody's doing their financial planning to come on the non-lucrative visa, and uh, there's no big change in the renewal period. So we're happy with that, we are over the moon. Um, but as I said, the law is incredible. There's so many things in there to be dissected, to be discussed and to have an opinion about. So what we're going to do is we're going to be doing that over the next six months in some of our videos and literally extracting particular points in the law and discussing them on here. And I'm not going to be doing it alone. I've already spoken to Costa, who is our colleague in Valencia, and he is... Um, very much like me, where we have, and I think he'll agree um, with this, is we have a passion for um, immigration, but we have a passion for doing it correctly, and we have a passion for Spain, we have a passion for our clients. So, um, you know, it's we want to know, and we're intrigued, we're also intrigued by every change and how it's going to be affected. And quite often, when we're chatting between ourselves, he'll be like, this is how they do it in Berlin, so I'm like, oh no, that's crazy, this is how they do it in Malaga. All right, so it's going to be good for us to have a discussion. So I'm going to do a couple of podcasts or more, hopefully, because the, about the various, we're going to be breaking down the various parts of the law and how that can be treated moving forward. Evidently, I'm going to be, as always, on YouTube Spain with Scats. So check that out. We're going to be doing live question and answers. So you'll be able to come in now, as I say, it's a huge law. So if you're going to ask me about article that we haven't read yet or whatever about a residency that we don't know, then that's fine. I'll give you a truthful answer if we don't know. But you could always jump on there and uh, and ask us questions because what we don't know, we will try and find out for you. And um, it's going to be quite an exciting six months while this is all unraveled, I think. So continue to watch the show. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, there's a high percentage of people who watch our videos and just don't subscribe. So it'd be great if you could to support the channel and help us keep these videos coming out and getting more people on there to discuss this. And uh, yeah, it's exciting times if you want to move to Spain at the moment. Mm -hmm.